everyone. Welcome to the Ladies of Sosa podcast to our audience out there. We are first and foremost, we want to give you guys a shout out because the feedback has been so amazing. Um, there has been so much support from people within our community, outside of our community. So we want to give you guys a round of applause. Like Christine already said, this platform is for everyone who has something to say, who has a perspective and to really give people in our community a voice. So send us your videos, send us um, voice notes. If you have um, a perspective and you're not, you don't, you just so happen not to be in Dallas. We still want to hear it. We still want to include it in the episodes or short, share it with our um, audience. And if you're in Dallas and you want to be on the show, send Ladies of Sosa an email or reach out to any one of these people and, you know, they'll let you know how to get in contact with us. And yeah. Oh, we can call in now. Zoom. Oh, yeah. So we have a brand new feature. Uh, you can now call in on Zoom. So if you want to be a part of the episode virtually, we can pull you up and you can actually be here live and the panel can respond to you and correspond. So, yeah. Yeah, you'd be on that screen right there. The audience yes, probably can't right, see it. Right here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, let's get into it. All right. Let's get into the topic. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about, we're going to take a deep dive into South Sudanese culture and talk about some parts of our culture and traditions that we should preserve and parts of the culture and traditions that we probably should do away with. Because living in the diaspora, obviously we can all get, you know, influenced or impacted by different cultures because, you know, America is a melting pot, especially here in America. And so it can, it can get really difficult navigating both worlds of being South Sudanese at home and having your family and your home structure, but then also, you know, being outside or being with your other friends that may not be South Sudanese, but and still having to like figure out, you know, trying to preserve your identity pretty much. We're interested to see what parts of your cult, our culture that you guys want to maintain and pass on to your family and the ones that you think may be toxic or is just outdated or we just need to let go of. So that's what we're going to talk about. But before we get into that, we, we want to introduce our panel. Yes, we want to introduce our panel. So we have Cynthia Fitzwilson here. Ooh, Hello. Okay. Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. Flew yeah. in from Whoa. New York, Harlem. Cynthia is an educator. She is a teacher and she is, I'll let you tell them what are tribe you, good? you are. Keep what tribe are you? A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything? Like what? Um, Baka. Mm -hmm. um, a little Arab somewhere in there, a little Ghanaian somewhere in there. It's, it's a lot. Yes, Melting pot. Yeah. So we're so, Cynthia's actually my cousin on my mom's side. So I'm so happy that she's here today. She flew in last night from New York and it just so happened that God brought her here. So we're so happy to have her. Yeah. And then we have Neil, Neil Amol. Neil Amol, yes. yes. And I didn't catch what you do. So I'll just let you go ahead and introduce yourself. So I'm actually studying to be a practitioner, holistic health and wellness coaching. Awesome. I might have to come and see you. I love yeah. that. <laughs> and then we have Edward. Edward, I'll let you go ahead and plug yourself. What's good? What's good? What's good, y'all? It's the one and only Edward, Eddie Ed, Mitri. You dig? Um, <laughs> uh, currently, I'm studying physical therapy. Uh, tribe wise, holding it down for the Zande people. You know, they call us the, the cave, the what? Uh, the hairy people of uh, Sudan. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I didn't know that. I, I didn't know, know that. that. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Rep, rep, your, rep your tribe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But, yeah. And you guys may or may not recognize Kwai. He's an OG. He was uh, in the men's mental health episode, and we're so happy to have you back with us. So I'll OG let you gentlemen of Sosa. yourself as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kwai. Uh, Kwai Thiel. And Tribe Wise from Dinka, I will specifically pleasure to join you guys again thank you for being here and next to him we have Tariq I'll let him introduce himself how you doing it's Tariq tribe wise I'm Nyambara there's only like six of us hey Ikatori oh yeah everybody Ikatori <laughs> yeah Nyambara Ugandese um we gotta talk about a profession so I'm a business intelligence developer on Microsoft side mm, but living nice. in Dallas Jacksonville Florida is home now Triple D. Okay. Hold and it down. <coughs> oh, Lord. <I> <coughs> well, he, yeah, you already know. Yeah. <laughs> no introduction. Yeah. Comedian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do people love Emmanuel? Emmanuel, you, have you seen the feedback? Got a fan base. Have right. you seen the feedback yet? Mm. Or no? No, I've only seen the hate. Really? I don't really like the <laughs> love. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, right. that's, that's so what you I need all that smoke, the, the energy. But I'm gonna go ahead and call you out the elephant in the room. What's going on with the hood, the hoodie? Look, I'm trying to look like Blade. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to look like a black vampire right now. Okay. Right? All right, because y'all both have the all black on black going. I don't know if you guys coordinated that or... Because oh, it's yeah, not yeah, even yeah. that damn hot in Texas. It's, but we're just going to play it's that. Freezing. It's freezing. It's not. It's Seasons have changed. Though. It's fall. Okay. Right. Don't go. He look, 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 right. he, look, he look good in the all black. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, not Blade. <laughs> trying to suck in my stomach. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Okay, stop it. All right. So let's get right. into the topic. So we already introduced it. So we're going to talk about aspects of our culture, South Sydney's culture that we should preserve and aspects that we think we need to do away with. So the first question we have for you guys is, do you think South Sydney's customs are being maintained in the diaspora today? I guess the better question would be, do you even know what the traditional South Sudanese customs and <laughs> traditions mm. are? And like when it comes to marriage, when it comes to someone passing away, mm. when it comes to certain aspects, do you feel like us in diaspora, we're educated and we know like when someone is getting married, this is the like the tradition. This is how it's supposed to be done. Do you guys feel like you are educated on that or? No, I don't think there's enough inter tribal knowledge. Mm. I think that's one of the bigger problems is we need to keep that. Uh, knowledge in everyone like I should know what all of their tribes are doing specifically mm -hmm. for their dad specifically for tradition specifically even for music dancing everything in between but it's only like the most popular tribes that are getting the shine which is a problem because now we're going to be losing our whole culture because Sudan is so diverse most mm -hmm. people don't even talk about that they just think of just one big tribe tall people that's it Right. I ain't even know some of these world beards, you know what I'm saying? Like that. <laughs> and when, and when, you say the, when you say the popular tribes, you're talking about like Dinka. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's get the elephant out of the room. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm Dinka, so I was like, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And that's cool that you're speaking on that and like you notice that because um, that's, I feel like a lot of the other tribes feel like they're not um, represented, mm -hmm. I would say, as much as the big major two tribes. Like when people think of South Sudanese people, I think they have a perception that all South mm -hmm. Sudanese people have the same phenotype of being tall, you know, dark and, mm -hmm. you know, beautiful, handsome. I'm, I'm going to take that for us. But there's so many <laughs> different tribes. Everyone who's uh, South Sudanese or Sudanese is not dark skin. There's many They're not different... all skinny. Yeah. We have, some, yeah. we have some thick girls, yeah. but a lot of people don't. We don't see that. <laughs> not a lot tall, <laughs> handsome. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, we got some thick boys, too. <laughs> 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 exactly. So that's why we want to show and give, like, shine a light let everyone speak for themselves and let them know like we're just as diverse as any other country there's what 64 Tri different tribes Tri different yeah. dialects and everything so yeah um what is your favorite south sudanese custom when it comes to i know i can speak for myself just to open it up um i love how we handle the grieving process so the way uh, the community bands together when someone passes away, usually everyone, once everyone hears the news, they're spread it around and then they'll all show up at the bereaved person's um, house and they'll set it up, move the furniture, lay out the blankets, and then they'll usually have the men in one room and the woman in another room, they'll start making shy and cooking and everyone just comes by to pay their respects. A uh, pastor will come, they'll have prayers, people will donate and um, just really just be there with the family. People will spend the night. Some people are there for days. They cook, they clean. They're just there to support you during like one of the hardest times in your life. And that's one of my favorite aspects of the culture. So um, if anybody wants to jump in and share theirs, we'd love to hear it. The celebrations, yeah. I'm, I mean, yes, you love you a good mean? wedding. Yeah, I, love, I love a you stay at a wedding. <laughs> 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 Sorry, it's my cousin, so I'm gonna call I her. Love, out. I love a good wedding. <laughs> Yeah, like, listen. We're waiting for you. I'm, I'm excited. Okay, we're we're, we're I mean, that age now. No, um, we're single. I think I. Let's not. I miss. Listen. I miss like I miss um community events. Whether it's a wedding, mm. whether it's a celebration of life, I just miss getting together. It didn't matter what tribe you were in. Like just people got together and celebrated whatever the occasion was. So I miss that aspect. Yeah, yeah, de definitely. I can I, I can speak to that because you know growing up. One one of the main things that we used to look for is like the Equatorian conferences, the New Air mm. conferences, the Dinga conferences, is because that's when you are able to meet other people across the state. This is before social media, before mm -hmm. 
Instagram, you know, we only had MySpace and 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 that's high five and I, I, that's about it. So if you want to meet somebody from another state, you got to be at, the, at that conference. Mm-hmm. And I feel like now, even when those conferences do happen, there's not enough people of of our age there. It's, it's typically either the older people mm-hmm. that's that's there who are trying who trying 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 to represent us, or just younger people trying to see what the culture is is like. So there's not enough people to guide them and teach them what's supposed what's supposed to happen because we just kind of on our we kind of on our on our own zone basically working doing everything and we just don't have the time to but i think we need to create that time to meet each other find out about each other and find out about cultures you know because that inner section of cultures you know find out what you know what 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 the dinka culture is like what the nowhere culture is like what the victorian mm-hmm. culture is like and just kind of you know um, kind of like a melting pot yeah. i'll say yeah. And that's a great point because I feel like those community events, it's like you got to showcase all these different tribes. Mm. So everyone got to learn about like this tribal dance or yeah. how this, you know, like, you know, what the, the different types of cups, customs that each tribe did. And I feel like that helped with like, you know, the, you know, tribalism right now. The conversation is so um, is prevalent. But when we were younger, we really weren't. Like me and Christine, we didn't even think about the different tribes that we were because yeah, we used to up. go to each other's <laughs> events yeah. and yeah. like we all like communicated and talked like we were just all South Sudanese. Yeah. So I think that's that is really important for us to bring back. I was just going to add to the point that Christine was making regarding the grieving process. I think that's one thing that we kind of all resonate with, especially when it comes to the togetherness aspect of what that brings. Um, and it, It's kind of hard to say, hey one of those grieving moments is our, um, I want to say like one of our favorite moments or favorite customs of South Sudan, but we can kind of allude as to why that is. We talk about um, the coming together, the Mm -hmm. spiritual aspect of it. I think elders do a really good job um, speaking about, hey, the, the, the passing on is not necessarily dying or disappearing and whatnot. It's it's transitioning into a life beyond um, the life that we know. Um, I think that has been one of probably um, the most teaching moments for me growing up. Um, obviously, all of us have experienced death and grief and all that um, um, not so fun, I guess, experiences of life. But because of the way we do it, I think it has shaped a lot of how we think about moving on um, beyond those moments of sadness. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. And I mean, I, I guess... We don't want to stay too long on the grieving process, but I think I love the the weddings as well. Yeah. I think weddings and um, funerals, I hate to say that, but those are the two times when no matter what's going on, you'll see people come out. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing I love about the weddings is that like they have the traditional kind of party on Friday mm-hmm. and then on Saturday, everyone will have like the main day and uh, the reception. And then on Sundays, they'll usually do like a barbecue or something. But there's a lot of controversy around the henna parties. I don't know if anyone can speak to it about how um, a lot of people feel like we need to step back from adopting Arab culture because, you know, the henna process and like the henna itself and what we wear is traditionally Arab. And it it was adopted. We adopted that culture because we all used to be one country. Mm -hmm. And now it's like maybe we should take some pride in being South Sudanese and maybe kind of try to figure out things that that resonate more with black South Sudanese, like black <laughs> Africans, you know, yeah. like being proud, proud of our country. So that's I've seen that conversation online. I've actually saw a girl post about like, we need to stop doing henna parties like that was that's Arab culture. That's not our culture. We need to come up with our own identity. How do you guys feel about that? I feel like at, at what ends, though, because even the, the name Sudan is, is, a, is, is an Arab name. So if you're saying that, oh, yeah, we need to end this culture because it's an Arabic culture, then are you going to say we can't eat uh, beans because it comes from Arab? <laughs> we can't eat hummus because it, it comes from Arab because I have family. You know, we, me personally, uh, growing up, I, most of my childhood was, was, was in Khartoum. So mm. I still see myself as Sudanese, even though, yeah, I, I was born in Juba. I was only there for a couple of years. So and then I got raised mostly in Cairo. So. The Arab culture, as much as we, you know, want to disconnect it from us, it, it is it is our culture as well. Mm. You know, they they've taken our culture and blended it. So I think a lot of times, what we want to say, oh, we don't want to do this and do that. Mm. It's like, okay, when are we gonna end? When when is that? 
at what point are we going to stop? What line? Is, yeah, where's yeah, the yeah. line at? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? So I think I think we just need to embrace our culture and embrace mm-hmm. other culture and just kind of make it a, uh, just blend it all together. And I'm going to say, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily our culture because, like, if you look at the history, how the Arab and South Sudanese, the actual term for Sudan means land of the blacks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily an Arabic it thing. Isn't, yeah. But land of black. So technically we were like the original people, the black. And we yeah. had our own cultures just like how all of us here are different um, tribes. Yeah. So we had that all in a melting pot. And the Arabs, if you look back in history and how the war happened and how now uh, South Sudan is one country and Sudan is North Sudan is one country. Mm-hmm. The Arab, they wanted to basically assimilate everyone to just become Arabic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said I don't necessarily think that's our culture. We adopted mm-hmm. that because we basically had to assimilate. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, a lot of the times we're thinking about colonization, right? So technically we think, oh, Arabs colonized us and we're, now we're eating their food. But at the same time, we put a little bit of spice on it. That's still right. a part of mm-hmm. us. It's like us when we do hip hop or we make music here in the United States. That's a prime example of why I love our culture, the music, right? Mm-hmm. Me and my sister, we're making music that's both Sudanese and has African-American influences. And so technically, that's still American influences. But mm-hmm. that is very much Sudanese mm-hmm. as it is American. Right. So you can be, you can have that and still be able to express your culture in it and be like, okay, we got this from them. But at the end of the day, we own it now mm-hmm. and we can do what we want to do with it. Because it's like, oh, we got the wheel. Who first invented the wheel? Okay, you got the wheel now. Now we got Hina and our stuff and we could put our but own culture But do we on own it? Yeah, that's, that's the question. Do we own it? The but, thing is, um, yeah. it's like what you said. You said it is our culture but i'm gonna say it is part of our culture mm-hmm. we don't necessarily own it but the arab invasion when it happens in east africa happened like 600 a.d so we've had that we've had that culture for 1400 years mm-hmm. even egypt is not a an egyptian name uh kemet is land of the blacks that's mm-hmm. what kemet stands for so when i say you know the name um sudan sudan borders itself is was made by the english by by um england mm-hmm. and then when egypt conquered sudan and and then England conquered Egypt. That's when they made the uh, the whole borders. So when I say it's like it's part of our cultures because even before those borders were created, the Arabs was was already there for fourteen hundred years. So we are part of that culture as much as we want to say, oh, it's part of their culture. Mm-hmm. We don't want to because me personally, you know, my family, we 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 are we are we we are also Muslims. So that culture in itself is is our culture. So if you, when when we say well, okay, we don't want to do this. Because it's 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 Arabic culture. There's there's a big, big part of South Sudan who are who are who are Muslim, mm. who have to follow the Quran, who have to mm. follow the guidance of, of the Quran. Oh, uh, so you cannot say that oh they're just Arabs. They are they are still they are still South Sudanese as well. Mm. I feel like what I'm taking you say. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, well, I feel like what I'm what I'm hearing you say is that like our culture at this point so much has been intertwined that it's like, yeah. Where can we part. start to even un- yeah. undo Unwind. these things? You know? Yeah. So like even to add to their points earlier, it's like we're at a point where it's all the spices have been put in. Yeah. Like, where do you start to take it out? Exactly. Mm. So personally, I'm down for a henna party. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love I love henna. I, I, I love it. Like, you know, you know, yeah. I, I love it. I feel like again, it's it's a time where we're all able to bring people together and as women, you know, you it's things I think to answer your question before, it's like there's things that at thirty three now I still don't know or mm. fully understand. You know, I think keeping those things in the culture will help at least Help us, excuse me, be able to um, at least, you know, grow from what we know now and add on to it. So, yeah. Do you think that there can be like a middle ground? Because we are now South Sudan, a, a mm-hmm. brand new country. And, you know, our our people fought for that country. So what are some things like you said, we that you said that's not our culture. Arab culture is not our culture. So what is our culture? What like I what do you think? I want to speak to that I think, because uh, when it comes uh, to like someone commented and was like, can you? They kept commenting about how we need to stop saying Sudan or we're Sudanese and we need to specify that we're South Sudanese. But I think the fact that our country split apart in 2011, um, like Tariq said, uh, he grew up in Khartoum. A lot of us are mixed. A lot of us, I mean, it's mixed now, but not really. We're just one people. We just ended up separating. Mm-hmm. But for me personally, my mom's whole family are living in Khartoum and they're mm-hmm. all Muslim. Mm-hmm. And she never even been to South Sudan. Mm-hmm. And my dad's whole family, they're from Juba and they're Catholic, they're Christian. And, you know, so when we split, it's like I'm having 
I just say I'm Sudanese to be honest because that's, I that's am how like I am half too, of my though. you know that's how I say. um and I feel like how am I going to say I'm South I'm South Sudanese when half of my whole family mm. lives in Khartoum during you know so it's really tricky it and I tricky. feel like we it's I would love to hear how you guys identify or what you guys yeah. say because for me like my I'm like it's tough it's not really even both I'm just Sudanese and I. Yeah, but I understand yeah. we fought for. Yeah, you know, like all that's that. the thing. I understood yeah. that the the person's myself. comment because when she was like, "You guys need to specify South Sudan," because at the end of the day, two mil- two million people died in the yeah. war to yeah. fight for what is now South Sudan. So I'm I don't think it's a big deal when people when we say Sudan because we're you know it's just natural. It's like roll off the tongue. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard, sometimes it's hard to say South Sudan. It's just Sudan. You know, mm-hmm. Sudanese. But I do think that we have to acknowledge and understand like like who like there was so much blood loss for us to become who we are and so sometimes you, it is important to specify that we're we're two different countries a lot of people are for unity i know who mm-hmm. rw you probably disagree yeah. um and i'm fine with that i'm i'm fine with unity as but we as far as us like respecting each other but at the end of the day we're still two different countries and we split for a reason there's a lot of different things black africans black south sudanese mm-hmm. or sudanese suffered at the mm-hmm. hands yeah. of like the Arab North, the Arabs, yeah. and so we can't act like that didn't happen, and just be like, oh, well, we, let's unite and be. No, there was and a they're reason. They're also trying yeah. to yeah. force like Sharia law mm-hmm. and um, Islam on the traditionally right. Christian Genital and the, and the yeah. South was like barely developed, but mm-hmm. Khartoum looked beautiful, mm-hmm. like you know. Yeah. Le- so I, I think I mean as I listen and hear everyone kind of speak, I think the main word that's been spoken is that hey this culture has been um embedded in us mm-hmm. right so that's something that we can't just overlook in search of hey let's go back to whatever culture that we all kind of acknowledge that mm-hmm. we don't even know mm-hmm. really like the depth of it or even when we talk about those specific topics marriage grief whatever um who can really sit here and kind of educate any of us that hey this is exactly how it's done mm-hmm. because when we speak about like the henna party or whatever, I don't know a Sudanese wedding without it. I've never mm-hmm. been to one without it. Mm-hmm. Um, grew up in Khartoum, lived in Egypt, been here for 12, 13 years now, and it's been the same replica every single time. Mm-hmm. So I think one thing that we do as a Sudanese people, unfortunately, and this is not kind of to go back at the person that made that comment, is that we're good at basically pointing out the issue when sometimes it's not really the main issue that we should really be discussing because yeah. why do we want to take that away? Like, what's the negative about it? I'd have Maybe to challenge that. But never give a solution. That's the... I'd have to challenge that by saying that, like, you... It would cause erasure on the truth. So, and that's when we have to have conversations with our elders. Mm-hmm. And we have to really go back. Because, like, look at us. We're all, we're all in America, right? Mm-hmm. For most of us, we're never having a conversation with those back home and being like, okay, so what was really yep. the traditions? Mm-hmm. What really happened? Because we had war for that long mm-hmm. so those traditions have been lost but we still can be able to put the effort in to find out what was necessary because we can't just allow it to die yeah that's yeah. the biggest fear i mean i agree with you that. i agree with you i just don't believe it was lost because um of just the war um i think we seldom put everything against the war having done all these negative things to us i think if we're being honest, like, especially in the diaspora, I don't think we have a lot of people that are so in love with our cultures, Mm -hmm. just within the South Sudanese culture. I think most of us have um, grown up outside, right? People that have grown up here in Canada, Australia, what have you. I think most of them are more intrigued by the cultures out here. And I don't want to take away from people, basically, like, that's all they know. I mean, I'm not going to be unfair to people growing up here and they went through the American system, Australian system of all of these things are not things to be taken against them. But I think we have an opportunity. And to your point, we have an opportunity to go to our elders and be like, hey, you know, teach me. And mm-hmm. then maybe mm-hmm. take that and then kind of educate your uh, fellow young men and young women. But yeah. I don't think we have a lot of focus on that. I think it's a lot of times it's fear of trauma because yeah. you got to understand our parents, all they've ever told us was the trauma. Exactly. They've never told us about the good times, no big the great times, what was happening back home, what yep. was going on. It was mostly, so this was the war. This is what happened. This is why we got here. Mm-hmm. So now you got to live this life, become the best you mm-hmm. can be so you can help back home. Yeah. Never let me learn yep. and actually be helped inside me because yeah. I'm still a child screaming yeah. for my mm-hmm. traditions. So yeah. I'm still inside looking for that, yeah. you know, support. So yeah. it's one of those things. 
I mean, I, I do think yeah, there, there is there is a, a aspect of trauma, but I think a lot of it is it's an aspect of comfort. We're comfortable here. Many of us, as much as we want to say, "Hey, well, I want to go back to to South to South Sudan and take up arms and fight and do this and fight against the oppression," even once when Sudan was attacking South Sudan, we, we're not going to do it because we're comfortable, mm -hmm. you know. And I'll, I'll be the first one to raise my hand and be like, "Yeah, I don't I don't want to go down South to South Sudan. I like my showers." I like to I like to take a shower every day, you know. Oh wow! So <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, wow. that's I mean, crazy. that's just that's just what it is. We we're comfortable well, here. Like, I think that. the honesty. I have never been to you know? yeah. That's yeah. just how it is. I mean, they, Wait, they take showers back home. No, what I'm saying. That's a crazy. Anthony Owens, somebody. I'm talking about comfort. I'm talking about comfort versus comfort versus oppression, right? So, so a lot a lot of times it's like the like the West. When they when they when they oppressed they used to oppress you know the Africa Asia etc. Mm -hmm. What they what they basically have done they're now still flip that yeah. no but they don't oppress us that right. way they oppress us with comfort. So now if even if I go back to South Sudan and I become a leader the first thing I'll do is if my children come up is well, I'm going to send them to universities to Europe to America because there's yeah. comfort. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not going to teach them down here. I'm not going to teach them in in, in in Juba. So I think a lot of times is that we there's so many knowledge in America. That can be taken back there, but we're not ready to go back there because mm -hmm. we're too comfortable here. Mm -hmm. I, I it's a lot of like stuff that we don't this. that we don't we don't want to live leave leave it out here. I actually just returned from there. I stayed for one month, and they did have showers. I feel like no, don't don't the shower is just an analogy. Don't quote me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't hold on to the shower. The shower is just an analogy. That's all it is. It's not. It's yeah. not, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I know they got you walk right, right into that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying we, it's we an analogy of comfort. Right. When you, right. Right. That's no, all but I is. understand <laughs> what you're saying because when I did go back, um, I actually job. had that thought in my head. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm actually comfortable in the U.S., but the uncomfortable makes me want to do more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think for us young people here in America, we don't necessarily know much about our culture and then go piggybacking on what Emmanuel said, asking our parents or our elders once we know that, we'll be able to understand and actually go back and try to help. You mm. know, that's my yeah, view. I do, yeah. But I, I agree understand what you mean about comfort, because I, for me personally, I do feel comfortable here because I have everything that I've worked for. So convenience, and then it's too. Yeah, exactly. It's convenient. That's what it is. But I, I say like this: a lot of us are building, though. A lot of us are building back home. Yeah. And it's better than it was ten years ago. Mm. Yes. And it's way better than it was thirty that. years ago. Obviously, <laughs> right. So I think I, I have a bright view of it because I think it's going to grow. And by the time 50 years from now, we're going to look back and be like, remember the time when we didn't believe that it could turn mm -hmm. into this? Remember mm -hmm. the time we didn't see what it could turn into? But I think our culture is growing. We're doing it right now. But I think a dope part of it would be just to include the elders and show them how to how? do it mm -hmm. in the modern era. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's a thing that needs to be necessary. We need to get them online. We need to get them to be able to share with these young kids. Because it will be a dope thing if you could, like, text message your hoboba, mm -hmm. FaceTime her, <laughs> and, like, really talk, talk. Like, but I think, yeah. And I think what the issue with that is, like, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of us are going back and, and building. But we're doing it individually. Yeah. We're not yeah. doing it as, we're not doing it as, a, as a collective. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like a lot of... A lot of time and money was lost in those events, those Equatorian, um, Dinka, Nuer conferences where we could have came up with a plan and be like, okay, we, everybody's putting in 250 and, and, and putting it into this pot, and this is what we're doing with that 250. Mm -hmm. We're going back, we're buying this land, we're building a school, we, we're building homes, et cetera, et cetera. But I felt like we just kind of partied and just chilled for Damn. 10 years. And then Call now— Right. Hold us uh, and then now, and and then now, when we like, okay, we want to go back and and buy. It's like the the. I, I want to. I think is 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 it a South Sudanese pound? Mm -hmm. Is yeah. is yeah. basically it, it's down. Mm -hmm. When 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 the country first came up, the South Sudanese pound was up. It was. Oh yeah. yeah. And we and that's that should have been our time to go in and actually start spending because individually we can we can only spend so mm -hmm. much in, as individuals. Yeah. That's a great you know, point about uh, we the have to go as, as a collective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a plot twist because. I mean, we've talked a lot about wanting to go to the elders. I mean, yeah. I don't know if we see it that way or not. We are becoming those. That's what yeah. For those that are not trying to <laughs> not be, the be in the back. <laughs> I mean, hey. Don't hey. talk too loud. I mean, hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. <laughs> Yeah. Hear me out. Hear me out. Because in a way, we are, are those we bridges, no right? You? Yeah. Are we no <laughs> hey, whatever. <laughs> so in a way, we are we are those bridges that are trying to connect our quote unquote elders and those who are uh, coming up next or whatever. But if we're really being honest, um, the challenge is really upon us because mm -hmm. we can't really rely on our again 
elders who come here, obviously speaking a different language, mm. right? And to your point earlier, all they know, unfortunately, is trauma and things that they've kind of experienced in the past. So do we really expect them to sit down and educate our kids and our whatever? Because one of my, I guess, greatest fears really is not being able to transition anything that I have learned or haven't learned yet to my daughter, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. right? Because th that's someone that has, like, was born here. All she knows is here. I mean, mm -hmm. granted, she's still young. I can still play that direct role, and I'm trying. But, like, I'm not trying hard enough because I don't know enough. Mm -hmm. And I, if I don't really look in the mirror and be like, hey, I need to go speak to such and such to learn something that I can go ahead and educate my friends and or my um, kids to come, then at that point, I'm really sitting here trying to blame the generation that's basically mm -hmm. leaving us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, as, as they leave, really, we're going to later on kind of have this conversation with our kids saying, hey, we really didn't learn much from our elders. But is it really our elders that we're blaming? For ourselves, for ourselves yeah. mm, that's, that's, that's why that's why that's why that's why i want to hear from him the, the yeah. young the youngest yeah. in charge well, I, was, yeah. I was about to say Sean. yeah yeah i am the youngest <laughs> <laughs> um but nah you make a good point about of course upholding the culture because when it comes down to it, it really is up to us because our parents can only be here for so long our elders right. are only gonna be here for so long and so it the great point is of course seeking out knowledge and everything i had the great experience of actually this past summer going to egypt and mm -hmm. experiencing like a full on traditional wedding, in a party, everything, four different events in three weeks. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. And so, the henna party was great. I know it's not typically really ours, but in a way, we've it's been with us for a long mm -hmm. time. And so, just seeing everything unfold in front of your eyes and seeing how the culture and tradition has really been there with us through everything, it's it, it makes you appreciate it a lot more. And so, it, it re yeah, it's just important that we continue to just take in everything we have and not take it for advantage because mm -hmm. before we know it, like uh, Kwa just said, it would come to a point where I wouldn't want our culture to die. Mm -hmm. I would want something that we could pass on to our kids and then their kids. And so it's something we just got to keep up with and not individually, but more yeah. as a group and as a collective because at the end of the day, it's all we got is us. Mm -hmm. And so we just can't rely on our own individual powers. Mm -hmm. So we have to do this together. Can I add facts? Yeah, can I add to that? Um, you mentioned something about not not being able to rely so much on our elders. Mm -hmm. I think we're at a point now where it's important to be able to bring them in these spaces that yeah. we're in now. Mm -hmm. Like it's dope to have millennials in here and whatever age, you know, <laughs> whatever <laughs> bracket you want to be. Yeah, in. X but and Y think, and Z and all that. Yeah, I, I think I think it'd be dope to have like aunties and uncles, even grandparents, to come yeah. in here and mm -hmm. even shed light, like you said, like not not only on the trauma, but like you know what was it really like? Cause I feel like mm -hmm. it's, it's things that I'm actually for myself. Mm -hmm that till this day I still don't have a full grasp or understanding of. So being, being able to bring them in this space and have these conversations would be helpful in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. But they, oh, but they do though. You have, you, I mean? have you watched Facebook Live? Yeah. Okay. Hey, oh. hey you know, talk about be, things we need to do away with. Yes. <laughs> they be okay, going on. Uh, you know, <laughs> the, the clubhouse. They be, they be on there. That was now. Really yeah. 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 The aunts are going to go ban them from clubhouse. That's that Gen X beef. This beef. I'm going to be telling what? You know what I mean? Can we address the Facebook Lives though? That was a great point. That's something we can do away with. It's very embarrassing. Oh my God. That's a culture. That's a culture we can do away with. Facebook Live. Our elders house Facebook live make Take sure y'all got a place to go sleep tonight i do my mom's favorite thing is facebook live but i'm just like but you know she's a little conservative it's a social media generation but it's like yeah. it's too it's much a lot sometimes. That's, that's and it's, it's crazy toxic. to see your mom mm. or auntie on there wilding out so i feel like <laughs> as far as like <laughs> you know we it's like that's, our, yeah, that's where they vent them that's like their venting yeah. place yeah and i don't know it's really their therapy for being no, honest yeah yeah, yeah. 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 But but that's why we need to bring yeah. bring shame back like you gotta shame <laughs> these people sometimes like yo if you wilding out right now like let's that calm part. down we like can't shame bring our back shame. you got no. to though we need at to the end of the day you're going crazy you're going age you're doing shame. that come on you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. You they don't I mean, understand it though they thinking it's like normal yeah. you know cause yeah, like they, have you, have you yeah. ever been around them when they just talking they always like that they always talking crap they're not realizing the fact there's other people forever it's just an aspect it's like yeah it's just like an aspect of like globalization now they can talk to more people with the about the same thing that they were talking about. Talking to. at the home. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
So they basically just took their living room to the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they love it. They're like, this is great. You know? That's yeah. my but, biggest fear is okay, having my hubbubba be an yeah. influencer to the, to the <laughs> you know, oldest community. It's community. embarrassing. <laughs> it, go, it goes <laughs> back to including them in the room. <laughs> no facts. Like, having them okay. in these spaces. Let's bring it back to sin. What I was going to say, it's, it goes back to the fact that I said earlier, like bringing them back, bringing them into these spaces where like, hey, auntie, like, let me show you how you look. <laughs> no, that's wild. Literally. Like, like you saved a lot. Like, let me show you how this, this is, this is not acceptable. You know, and even uncles too. But I think when they like, when we, we as a people like education, it's we're just going with the flow. Yeah, but we're mm-hmm. big you know? on respect in our culture, oh, and it's certain but, but, but respectfully, it's like no, so, no. Right? It's and I'm saying it's, it's hard. Like we have so much respect for our elders. So when I get on Facebook and I see like an Auntie Wilden or, you know, it's like we respect our elders so much that it looks crazy. Like I would yeah. never want to log on and see my mom on there while they're mm. not like that. Yeah. So it's just like certain things. It's just, you know, I guess just teaching them like mm-hmm. social media decorum, like oh, people Etiquette. can see Etiquette. this. <laughs> um, but just to uh, touch on your point about bridging the gap, I think that we do need to tap in with our elders. Mm-hmm. Like Edward said before, it's too late because we don't know the customs. We don't know, like, the true, mm. this is the way that we do it. This is our culture. We need to tap in with them and learn before it's too late because we are now, like, getting okay. into that place to where we're we're the new aunties and uncles. <laughs> I have I have a theory on this. Some, some yeah. of them use that as a way of discrediting you sometimes, mm. especially with our elders. They'll not give you certain pieces of knowledge mm-hmm. to say you're too young to understand what mm-hmm. this is about right. mm-hmm. yeah. so they'll shut you down in the conversation how do we push back on that but that's how you got to hold them as uh, you got you got you got to hold them accountable at that point yeah. you know i think i think but a lot of times it's like we're way. too respectful <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, where we respectful. we are when somebody when you see somebody's doing something wrong and but you're like okay that's my uncle i'm not going to say anything crazy but it's like no if you if you're yelling at if you're yelling at, at my auntie at, at my or, or at your wife in the in an event, even though you yes you are my uncle, I'm going to check you. I'm going to be like, yeah. no, this, you yes. shouldn't do this. Yeah. And, but I think a lot of times it's like we we were like, nah, we got to calm down, we got to yeah. do this, we got to do that because we want to be we want to be respectful. But that's a, a good part of our put, culture. We, we can do away with yeah. too. Yeah. I feel like turning a blind eye Ooh. to like mm-hmm. domestic Everything violence, must talk about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> domestic <laughs> violence, that's, turning a blind a eye when you yeah. know yeah. someone what? is being abused. It's like oh, they're like just go back to your husband, stay in your husband's house. Like they'll advise you to just stick it That's, out and mm-hmm. also i you know trigger warning but sexual abuse our community yes. does turn a blind eye a lot Absolutely. to people who come forward with that type of mm-hmm. thing so i think that's something we definitely need to do they guilty with. put them in the ground mm. that's it I don't know about all that. <laughs> I do not condone any violence. Kid, anything, anytime you're abusing somebody that's less weak than oh, you, yeah. put you in the ground, dog. Like, there's oh, no yeah. point. Yeah. And, like, now you're going to try to save face and pretend oh, like fighting. you ain't really do it. Like, nah, knock him out. No. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean by that. Like, hey, yeah. whatever. Yeah. No, that, I'm, I'm yeah, with I that. that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I feel like I'm sorry, man. I might offend y'all, but I feel like we protect men so much in this culture. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's now time to protect our women mm-hmm. yep. and so and our and our young girls yeah, our young and the young boys especially. too because things happen to them too yeah. that people yeah. don't speak about yeah let's but. just keep it like even keep balance it like yeah. let's protect all of us yeah. protect we, let's protect the women as much as we protect the men yeah so. well, i think i think i mean obviously to your point there is no deniability as to how important that is but i think one missing factor is always education mm-hmm. and really education from the standpoint of are they really doing it because they hate women and young girls and and maybe that's up to everyone's different perspective. perspective. Yeah. Um, but I really want to talk about how we don't take into consideration that that's probably all they knew, right? Like, if we look at our culture, I mean, for generations and generations, like, men are the central piece of every relationship there is, mm. from a father to daughter, from a father to a wife, to the sister, to what have you. Patriarchy. Um, and that's not necessarily Patriarchy. the worst situation mm-hmm. if it's done the right way. And the right way meaning understanding these people and their, you know, rights from the standpoint of, like, how you communicate with them, how you um, care for them even, because we sometimes kind of hide true intentions behind wanting to protect our daughters and our sisters now, I'm, and I'm our gonna say, I'm gonna say that's a part of the culture that needs to die because that's that's crazy because now you're pro- you're protecting sexual assaulters you're protecting that's people the that are really yeah, yeah, yeah. Been but I think yeah. you have yeah. to take them out yeah, that's but, the point. but I, yeah. I, think I think his point, point. was, was about, point about was education is uh, about yeah. if you know education. better you do better mm-hmm. I think yeah. a lot of times it's like even right like right now as you know somebody in the old old, old, old days you know looking back down you know some of the stuff we was doing in the club I'm looking back it's like yo we 
crazy. Like wow. that's not that's wild. Like what was in the crazy, world? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because we didn't at that at that stage, we didn't know what was going on. We were just we just thought we were just having fun. You know, you, you, yeah. you talk you talk to you talk to a girl, da 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 da. But then when you look back, it's like, no, this dude should, should not should not have done that. I should have stepped in and be like, yo, no, don't, don't, that don't, is don't do such that, my a brother. Good and point. to your point, you know is, I mean? wow. it's because, awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because call them out. Accountability. Yeah. Accountability, Accountability. and Accountability. the men yeah. holding yeah. their friends accountable. Yeah, exactly. Because you've yeah. you seen, you seen what so and so did. Yeah. Or, yeah. Don't y'all know y'all uncle. friends. No, no. I was going to say, on the, like, yeah, like, you know how you, most of y'all in here probably can relate to this. Growing up, most of us went to these parties. These the hufflers. The huff, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We went from there to like now you're 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 grown. Oh, mm-hmm. oh someone so ah. that's yeah. crazy. You someone so daughter or you someone so son? It's like, that Rusa. Yeah, but yeah. It's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a weird feeling <laughs> to, to know like yeah. bro, I used to come to my house. Like I used yeah. to see you, your uncle so and so. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I think it's you just that that you kind of yeah that accountability <laughs> piece of like hey bro like that's so and so's daughter or that's you know yeah that's 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 little so and so like. It's not even limits, that. You know? It's just like you'd yeah. be seeing the uncles just move around talking to everybody at the Mad. party. Just, wow. Yeah. Wow. If that one doesn't work here. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, give it up. That's and the, the crazy thing is, everyone wow. sees it. Yeah. Everyone sees it. But so back to that peak. Yeah. Like, oh, it's just like, like it's, it's not, it shouldn't just be like, oh, that's just so and so. Like, no, like, hey. But I on, think, on the side, like, because it's not cool. But I think even then, though, we got to hold ourselves accountable. Because if I know my friend beats his wife, I got I got to hold him accountable. I can't, oh, yeah. I, can't, I can't be friends with you. So it's not even an uncle aspect. There's there's a lot of us in our age mm. who got who got a wife who got a girlfriend who's abusive. Facts. And doesn't have to be physical abusive. It can be mentally mm-hmm. abusive. We got to hold him accountable. Like no, you can't do that. Go to therapy. Do something yeah. mm-hmm. outside of what you're doing right now. But you I don't think I mean? there's enough of us that are in doing therapy. Like a lot of oh, us yeah. need yeah. to be in it so that they know specifically how to deal with it and That's just true. being able to understand us with that mm-hmm. empathy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because. All, yeah. yeah, having an Af- a white dude yeah. as my therapist is not gonna work for me, dog. Like, I'm not gonna yeah. lie to you. And then, yeah, you make a good point because stepping up and saying that someone's doing wrong, what I hate is they'll think that you're disrespecting me. Yeah, how mm. am I disrespecting you by telling you you're wrong? Yeah, at that point, your pride and ego is shot, mm-hmm. and I just called you out because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. you didn't like the truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's I feel also... like um, because of trauma and everything else, I feel like our elders, parents, they're they're sensitive, mm-hmm. so you have to kind of come in a respectful way. Like, it matters how you say it. Because if you mm-hmm. just blatantly say it and you mean well, they're going to take it wrong because of For sensitivity. Sure. So, I think shame, too. Uh, yeah. A lot of things are brushed under the rug because... People don't like for shame to be brought upon them mm-hmm. or their family. So you can know Uncle So and So is like he likes to talk to young girls, or you know he's mm. moving kind of funny. But like you won't ne- necessarily call him out or speak on it because you don't want embarrassment, you don't mm-hmm. want shame. So mm-hmm. everything is about like sweeping things yeah. under the rug and like just protecting your name, making sure you don't look bad in front of people. Um, and I think a lot of a lot of things get kind of like push through Mm -hmm. um but i feel like we can change that now with our generation with like calling Mm -hmm. each other out Mm -hmm. um and holding each other accountable when you see unacceptable behavior Mm -hmm. in the community i can agree with that because i feel like for some of us like especially within the community we're people pleasers Mm -hmm. we hate we hate to get our image that is the culture yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's like we hate to get our image stains um our reputation reputation. yeah it's everything our legacy Mm -hmm. our legacy is everything yeah so they let everything slide like they'll get slapped I hear I turn the other cheek. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, it, makes no, it makes no sense. But yeah. but this the crazy thing is like we're willing to protect and go crazy on other situations. Kill, so we, die, yeah. like, like yeah. somebody could say a curse word to you, and you'd be like, "I'm gonna mess this person up. I don't mm-hmm. know this person." Mm-hmm. But like your own people, you just oh, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. really? Like, yeah. You, you, it's okay. What, what is that like? At a certain point, if somebody's going to do standard. something, if I found out like, somebody bro. was disrespectful to, to my daughter, I don't give a damn if you're my uncle. I don't mm-hmm. give a damn if mm-hmm. you're but older. That's the thing, yeah. man. Respect it's goes like, both ways. That's Respect it. goes it, both it, ways. It so it's like, like he was saying, if it's like an uncle, they feel like, oh, that's disrespect. You cannot speak to me. You're like, younger than I'm me. Your, Why are you talking exactly. to me like that? So that's another thing. They feel like because there's a certain age, like you can't call somebody out or like check them and be like, oh, you can get hands put on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how long are you looking at me like I'm a little kid? Yeah. Yeah. You just got to slap him one time. Yeah. I'm not saying I know somebody who's got it. <laughs> I'm saying at that point, they're like, okay, there's no, no more of that you, conversation. You, you think because you saw me grow up, like, yeah, I'm getting older. <laughs> age is a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah right. you carried me. Oh, uh, yeah, you know my dad. You know mm-hmm, my mom. Mm-hmm. But Uncle not 56, dog. Like, come on, dog. <laughs> yeah. I think that's another true. thing that we need to get rid of, outdated, let it go, tribalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I feel go. like for our generation, though, I mean, I know it's still a thing. It's like in the background, but for us, I don't think it's 
in the forefront of like it's like oh you're mm. from this tribe I'm not gonna mess with you. I yeah. I would say that we don't we're not violent about it like you know how war, back home it's like war it's actually political I think here it's more like whispers Covert. yeah but but, like, but, 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 but but you need but means. you need to define define tribalism well what is mm. what is tribalism. I mean, I think in the context of us and diaspora, because obviously we're not fighting, we're not going to war about it. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's a lot of times where certain tribes talk about other tribes behind the scenes with their own people, within their mm -hmm. own clans. Mm -hmm. I've heard it. I've seen it. You hear it. And I'm sure. And I've heard it, too. I'm, I'm Dinka and Nuer. And I've heard of people from even my tribes say maybe something that's derogatory or mm -hmm. negative about mm -hmm. somebody else from another tribe. Yeah. And I'm sure it goes b both ways. But I think here in diaspora, it's more like secretive. It's just like we talk we talk about it amongst our own people. Um, but I be checking. My I thought that shit about everybody though. So yeah. I, ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie because I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I talk shit. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody can get it. Equatorian. Anyway. I, I talk. I talk shit about everybody. <laughs> Don't check my Facebook. <laughs> my Facebook is we used to be crazy, but now it's kind of died down. But no. But no. Because I do. I do. It's it's many, it's many events I go to, and I pass I pass off for a dinka. So a lot of time it's yeah. like. Uh, it, it was it was an event I was at, and and this this Dinka guy uh, is he's an older guy. He's just, he just came started talking to me in Dinka with that, <laughs> and I'm just standing there. I didn't know what what he said. At the end, he just he he get mad at me because I didn't able to reply to him. I was like, yo, I'm not Dinka. Like, what do you want, what do you want me to do? Yeah. You know. So That's I think funny. like we all look alike at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we are. So you don't think that people from different tribes talk negatively? Oh no, I already said I do. I already said I do. I talk about oh, everybody. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we do. We definitely do. <laughs> you know what's crazy? We do. Now I have to do it. <laughs> Like the generations, mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. I see Sudanese, like you're Sudanese, I'm Sudanese, cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't it's not as think bad about as it was what back then. Yeah. Back then, then it was it's worse. like, you, you brought who home? Yeah. Well, no? I think that's, <laughs> that's, and, that's and that's yeah. where, that's you, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It's like, if we just talking, talk, let's talk, just talking shit, just talk shit, okay? But if you're saying, okay, no, this is my daughter, I do, I do not want my daughter to, to marry mm -hmm. a new air girl, mm -hmm. that's when I think it, 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 you're putting mm -hmm. into actionable it's offense crazy. at that point. Yeah. yeah. If you're just saying, oh, you, because because at the end of the day, we all got stereotypes. You know, we just we just yeah. talking, we just talking. <laughs> you know, but it's it's about what you put into actions. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what I that's what that's what I think is my main sticking point. And this is where and I think comedy wasn't... heals. Yeah. That's what exactly. I say. It's like exactly. we need to be able to joke more with yeah. each other and I think I we're think getting to do the yeah. generation. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz like we should be able to make fun of each other and be like y'all do this a lot. Yeah. Or we do this a lot. And no, because our people, it gets violent. It Let's just be honest. Like, when there's it, Medisa it, in the system, yeah, it's when there's liquor violent. involved, that's when it gets active. violent. Yeah. Just put a little sprinkle okay, in it. I didn't mean to interrupt what you were about to say. You were about to say something. Now, I was going to say, um, it wasn't always that way. Mm -hmm. Like, tribalism didn't, didn't exist like that. It was after the war the started. War. Mm. Yeah. Since it wasn't like that before, the reason why it's like that now, I think, is because of trauma. Mm. So if this tribe did this to you and this tribe did this to you and you remember back then this person did this to you and they're from a different tribe, mm -hmm. then you're going to blame them mm -hmm. and you're not going to welcome them. So then that's how tribalism begins. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I think it's a beautiful thing about being at the West is, though. We got to be cool with each other. No, really. Yeah, because the rest yeah. of the world is looking at us like choice. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. choice. Yeah. I think the main, the common denominator topic here is just community. Mm -hmm. So once we have that community, we we're able to kind of Put all our heads together and like right now the millennials bring the parents in and create a community to be able to educate everyone mm -hmm. and yeah community is important yeah talking about it too yeah like it, when you talk about something it in a way it heals and so especially that community as well that adds into that mm -hmm. so just taking the time to talk about how you feel because we can we can harbor ourselves very very well mm -hmm. we don't Especially our parents, our older people, they don't talk about no emotions, no feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you do see, you're like, oh my God, you love each other? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. It's, it's true, true, though. It's I nice. mean, I've, I've had a great, of course, with my parents, seeing how they love each other is beautiful, but just like, just in general in our community, like, you don't see people display affection or show enough emotion now yeah. much. So, cry to your friends, man. Yeah, crying is a great, like, it's therapeutic, like, you, you, it's not bad. Boys, women, girls, everybody, cry to your friends, talk to your friends, be mm -hmm. genuinely friends that, like, support yeah. each other. Because this is one of the biggest things for us is, like, our mental health has been declining mm -hmm. for so long. Mm -hmm. It's, like, cry to each other, talk with each other. The other day I had a fifth of Hennessy, and me and my boy were crying over some BS. <laughs> we were crying over the Lion King. It didn't make any sense while we were crying. Yeah, we were yeah, just yeah. crying, but it worked because we both men. And then afterwards, you know what I'm saying, we watched them fighting. <laughs> <laughs> It depends on my outfit. Don't cry on me. Take, 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 take it to the shower. But no, but, but no, he's right though. We we 
I think as especially us us men, we 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 need to start showing more emotion because yeah. a lot of times when we're going through so much, we don't know where to turn to. You know, especially if you if your if your father is not here, your mother is not here, you you can only turn to your cousins, your friends. But then at yeah. the end of the day, be like, okay, well, what what do you want to do? So I think I think the biggest thing that we need to do as far as the, uh, as far as our trauma is is find a therapist, talk mm-hmm. to a therapist. Talk to somebody who who looks like you, like mom, like all all of my therapists that I go to are black women. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I, I can't talk to a man. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Why? Yeah. So that's just me. Yellow so boy. I do, I do, I, I do go, I do talk to you know, I, I do talk to therapists, and it does, and it does help. Like yourself, sometimes you just need to cry. Mm-hmm. If you got, if you got to cry in, in in front of your boys, or you got to go cry in the shower, just cry and let that shit out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Emotions are important. Yeah. To feel. If Absolutely. there's any Sudanese therapists that watch the show, there actually yeah, yeah. Shout is out to, uh, one my, that we want to feature. Yeah, my 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 cousin Mazin, he he's he's uh, he, he's he's kind of getting his degree right now for for therapy, so he's he's gonna be a therapist in a couple of months. So nice. shout, shout, shout out shout out to Mazin. Oh, shout out. Yeah. Now I was just gonna say, um, I'm gonna be a practitioner next year, so I'm not technically a therapist, but I can help you mm. um, maneuver your emotions and yeah, work like through. And where that. where can we follow you? Where can we reach you? So you can follow me on Instagram. So it's mm-hmm. Niel underscore 26 dot Amo. Ooh, and can you spell that? N-Y-I-E-L. Yes. Uh, underscore dot and then 26. Uh, perfect. Amo. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. going to type it up. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> we got you. We yeah. got you. <laughs> All right. Send. Send city. Ooh, kind of long. Magnificent fits. Uh, M-A-G-N-I-F-I-C-Y-N-T <laughs> underscore. F I T Z, but yeah, plug it. We got you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and just let them know once again what you do. And then... oh, I'm a teacher in Harlem. I teach um oh, awesome scholars in middle school. So. Yes. That's amazing. Oh, and I also um <clears throat> okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I um feel like I'm getting up on my fashion. You know, on Instagram, Fitz. you'll see. Hold it down. Fitz. Fitz. Back off. Oh. You know, and that down. her last name is Fitz Wilson, but yeah. she really put that ish on. So just go on her Instagram and see. That's a perfect play big on up. your last name and yeah. 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 Fitz. I like oh, I love it. Big like up, big up. When you see it in writing, then you'll come back. Yeah. yeah. Oh snap! Yeah. Um, y'all can follow me on Instagram everybitchy underscore. Other than that, you know, one of these years I'm gonna be your best favorite physical therapist. So rehab, any all that, I'm good with my hands. Pause. I'm gonna have to, I'm, I was gonna have to say, I'm gonna have to hit you up, but I ain't, I ain't gonna hit the yeah. Pause. 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 Hey, stop hating. Stop hating. Stop hating. Stop hating. Stop hating. <laughs> I'm definitely not sending my wife, but I'm gonna send my friend. Instagram yeah, number is gone. Up to yeah, me. You feel me? That's funny. Um, yeah. So my social media handles are the same for all the different sites. I will chief. That's A W E I L C H I E F. Okay. Uh, my social media. I don't, I don't really do that on social media that much anymore. So, but you can follow me at Arnabe A R N A B I twenty on Instagram. But I do want to give a shout out to my to my little brother who does a lot in the social media. He's a rapper. He does SEO marketing. He does business business marketing. It's going to be Bunduki underscore. Oh, we love Bunduki. Oh, yeah. We got to get him on. K-I underscore. Make sure you, big, big you, you tell him to him. And then shout out to, to his, his girl, hopefully soon to be wife, Corey Jean, at D-T-H-E, Corey, K-O-R-I-J-E-A-N-N-E. She's an actor. He does SEO marketing. All That's real love. Yeah. You, Dang, you a real one, too. Hold it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all already know me, Emmanuel <laughs> underscore uh, comedy. Uh, but y'all need to listen to my sister's new music. Uh, we're shooting a music video tomorrow, but it's going to be Blue Now. Uh, she just dropped her single Pretty. It's about colorism. It's about, uh, we help, I help co-write it. And it's about uh, your experience in America, especially in the West, of being a dark-skinned girl. So y'all be out there. Check that out. Right. And Can't Sarah, Sarah, that. we got to start plugging ourselves. Go ahead and yeah. plug yeah, so your y'all, y'all have been looking for you guys. Yeah. What's up? What's up? What you got going on? Y'all can find me at Ladies of Sosa. No. What's your Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah. So simple. So Sarah, my name is spelled S-A-H-R-A. Okay. And what else you got going on? Well, I do Ladies of Sosa. Okay. Um, I also have a fashion brand called Sahara Meets Nile. Um, it's a playoff. Oh, it's a playoff wow. my name, Sarah, like but like that. the Sahara oh, Desert times the Nile dope. River. Yes. Yeah. Oh, come on. That's dope. We love it. Thank you. That's 
Okay. And, and another book is coming. Oh, yes. And my mom just wrote a book. We have it right here. It's called Woman Caught in the Crossfire. Wow. It's about the experience of women during the war in Sudan and everything that they went through. Because, you know, we don't really talk about the women's experience that much. So it's available on all platforms at www.com womancaughtinthecrossfire.com. She wrote it with her really good friend named Susan Clark. They wrote that it together. Most important question. And they've been writing it since I was a little kid. Like, I was a kid when they were writing this, and it's finally come into fruition, so she worked really hard on this. So y'all go get a copy. Oh, that's what I was about to ask. Okay, we're good. Amazon. <laughs> and what are some there's... things they can find? Like, is it just, like, stories about it's... they were trying to run in the war and yes. escape? Okay. Yes, like, her fleeing the war with my dad, like, her, my dad not being there because he was involved in politics, so her raising her kids i wasn't born yet but it's all of that all of that are you and gonna I read the like audible a lot of people can relate huh? to it. you gonna read the audible yeah oh, am i gonna audible? read the audible are you gonna speak the audible yeah, yeah, yeah. like and you're narrate the speak. book like oh, narrate we already audible. have someone narrating it so. oh, okay yeah. nice, nice, nice. yes we have all all of it you that's get beautiful it. Yeah. okay then yeah and last but not least me so you guys can follow me at christina ladu i'll plug it in and i am a realtor so if you are looking to buy sell or invest in the dallas fort worth metroplex Definitely hit me up. I have a lot of stuff coming um, in the works as far as like educating our community. I was so blessed to have like some of the, a lot of people in the community, elders, reach out to me for their real estate needs and really help jumpstart my career. And it just means so, a lot to me growing up in front of them for them to like give me an opportunity and it helped me, you know, through my sphere of influence and referrals. So yeah, if you're looking to buy, sell, lease, or just get educated um, on real estate in general, definitely tap in with me and ladies and sosa those are my two most important things i got going on right now is ladies and sosa and real estate so yeah <laughs> i love that you said the plugger that's really dope yeah, yeah. 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 well thank you guys so much thank that wraps up this episode please follow us at ladies and sosa be sure to like comment subscribe yeah keep leave a review mm-hmm. leave a review leave on a our comment. podcast on spotify and apple spotify apple and then leave a comment on youtube instagram however you want to reach us reach out to us and reach out to our lovely panel we appreciate y'all thank so you guys much. so thank you. much thank you. Thank you guys. and that wraps up this shoot yes stay tuned for episode what the, i don't this know what six, six seven seven see whatever, you the next one just watch the next episode <laughs> bye love y'all <laughs>